taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video, that'd be tremendous. Today we're starting on our man, it's Count Truffles. You might notice that he still says £120 a week. Um, that's because when I set up new contracts for players, I make them start at the end of the season, because the way I look at it is if he wants a contract in like February, I can get off with paying him basically nothing for another three or four months, and that's fine by me. That's just a little thing I do. Now you might notice there's a few sort of downward arrows here. I think that's just because he's been playing a lot of games recently, a bit of tiredness. We'll have a look at his actual attribute progression in a sec but he's getting there like he is considered the best striker at the club right now um the uh, the key thing about him for me is and i think this might just be partly because he's a young player is this consistent upward progress for the most part yes he's not scored as many goals as perhaps we would have liked this year he's not hitting the 20 in the league like tyrese campbell has the past few seasons but i feel like when he give him a couple of seasons and he soon will be and he has the be ability to go well beyond tyrese campbell and i just figured start him early get him in there now and the fact is we've done bloody well this season and yes maybe we would have done slightly better with tyrese campbell there but i felt like it was a case, a case of taking a step back in order to take seven steps forward in the future the guy's still only 17 you know um so let's have a look at his attribute progression because i think what's really important is the overall, like, you can look at it in the last month and see there's some slight downsides. Unfortunately, you, I always find that no matter who you put them in with mentoring groups, you always get this sort of, the mixed attributes of the group are having more of an effect. And I'm like, all the players have more, all the players in his mentoring group have higher determination than him, at, or at least level, and yet it always seems to go down. I never see that going up half the time, but that's a bit annoying. His composure, though, remember, he was, what, 7-7 seven and seven or 8-8, eight and eight, is now 10 on the composure, 9 on decisions. He's getting there. I've got him working on that incessantly, his final third, because that's really, really important. Uh, his jumping reach has also increased by 2 up to 11, so that's definitely helping him slightly, uh, as are his long shots going up too, because he's got solid heading, he's just not the tallest, so... For my money, I'm happy with his progress so far. He's slowly becoming the footballer I want, and he is still only 17, so we can't really fault him too much. Dirtiness is a hidden attribute. I think your man might have 20 in it. Um, Yeah, Chuich, a little update on him. He's now been sent off five times in about, I think, 20-something matches. He's had five red cards, so 20 perhaps not, but maybe 30. I think he might have a 30 in that stat. Nico Williams never seems to be able to last 90 minutes, whether injury or suspension. Um, Yeah, tr tr very, very true. I have a suspect, two, two suspicions about Nico Williams. Either he has somewhere to be and he always has to nip off early, or maybe he's got like an ankle tag and he's not allowed after a certain time. I don't know. Stark Griffiths, looky here. He got his dag to knack the gaffer. Yeah, I'm expecting Mr. Coates to appear and we'll have a proper fight. My dad will beat up your dad. With Arnie and Troffin, uh, I'd like to see you try two striker formation. I've had a lot of success with 442 this year. Uh, Edit, I really like that hoodie. Okay, so firstly, the hoodie, I think, was if it was the burgundy one with the little tree thing here, that was from a company called uh, High Hopes Clothing. Uh, they do a lot of Instagram ads, but they actually have really high quality clothing. Not a sponsor or anything like that, but most of those ones suck, but their quality, their clothing is actually seriously nice. And they're not that expensive either, so yeah, check them out. As for the two striker thing, I, I'd be interested. The problem is, it's not just a case of going, oh, we've got two strikers now. If we play 4-4-2, we have to drop both of our wingers back, which means we basically need to be signing brand new players because our players are not super comfortable in those roles. And Ron Coates would... Like, we would need to completely revamp the entire tactic and squad, and it's just not something I really want to be doing right now. Not when we sort of found something that might work for us, particularly with this new high-line approach. Right, a couple of games off camera, literally two. We've had the Brentford game. Um, You'll be interested to see how that one's gone. And we've had Barnsley in the league to see how things are shaping up to today's massive ones. It really is all on the line in these next two episodes. My God. And there we have it. Tyrese Campbell, 114th minute winner to send Notts County to Wembley in the most sort of half-hearted way possible. The whole, we're going to Wembley for a semi-final. Does seem a bit dumb to me. Like, I wish they'd still play them at, like, neutral grounds around the country. It'd just be kind of cool. But there you go. Um, so, yeah, we beat Brentford in the FA Cup quarterfinal. I think we deserved it on the night. The fact that we went to extra time was a travesty, <laughs> to be honest. We also couldn't play Regan Booty in this match because he demanded a rest, or either I said I'd give him one, and I think it kind of helped. So he was on the bench for this one. But Gubarinic, as you can see, was bloody fantastic on the night. Uh, and Akinola was also excellent. But essentially, it took until the 90th minute. I think it was actually Ricky Griffiths who provided the assist. I can't remember actually. Yeah, it was. Griffiths, well, it technically doesn't count because Ricky Griffiths whipped the ball in, Campbell headed it against the post and it came back to him and he was able to smash in the rebound for 1-0 and we are in the FA Cup. I think we're playing Liverpool, uh, so we're going to get absolutely battered. But then probably even more important was away at Barnsley at Oakwell. A an 85th minute winner from Count Truffles gave us the victory. This was huge because Fulham have dropped more points in their off-camera matches and we have a game in hand on them now. They've actually slipped below West Brom. Uh, because we had a lot of matches postponed because of international duty, other teams still play. 
played. And it meant that Fulham, I don't think they won either of the two games they played while we were away. And we're in a really, really prime position now, but we've got a lot of tough games to come. Um, this was a hell of a bailout type of match. We had a goal that I believe was wrongly disallowed in the first half, where Regan Booty had a shot which deflected into the net. But because Costel Trofan was in an offside position, it didn't count. But he wasn't anywhere near the goal. He was off to the side and the ball just went in. And I was like, uh, what? So that's kind of annoying. Um, so Booty should have had a goal in this. It would have probably been an own goal as it happens. But regardless, we got the win in the end because Count Truffles bailed us out. And that's a massive goal for us. I celebrated this one like nobody's business. And as you can see, all of that leaves us on 78 points. West Brom are in superb form. You can see Fulham haven't won in their last four. We're now three points above Fulham with a game in hand. Um, and I don't think that game in hand is today either. Fulham play Huddersfield at home. Not an easy one for them either. Brentford have really slipped down the league too. So Leeds are pretty... I think Leeds are going to be comfortably promoted this year. I mean, literally anything could happen now. We've actually only won two of our last five ourselves, but we're not losing games, which is the most important thing for us right now. And someone said they wanted to see this guy, Justin Geraldo. Here he is. He's a Colombian. Uh, signed for Birmingham City from Atletico Nacional. He's got 17 goals in 26 appearances for them so far. That composure looks really, really solid. Uh, balance, acceleration. The guy looks absolutely phenomenal. But before you say, you should sign this guy, what's the point? Like, we've got Count Truffles, he's going to get there, I hope. And I don't want to, because this, I mean, look, he's worth seven and a half million pounds. Can you imagine how much they'd want for him? Uh, West Brom are away at Birmingham City. So they've got the league's top scorer there too. But both Fulham and West Brom, I mean, it's between us three for that final spot. We've got the advantage of the game in hand, but I really want to make that count. Just do the old shuffle. Uh, Akinola Hughes is back too. I don't know if I want to play. Is Hermanson available? Then we will definitely play Hermanson. I know he's a little bit worse for wear, but like he definitely needs to be playing. He's the best of the bunch. Coatsy or Griffiths? Now, I know a lot of you want me to play Griffiths over Coatsy, but I assure you, I, you have a jaded view of um, R Ricky Griffiths because unfortunately, not unfortunately, when you've seen him, you've seen the absolute best of him. And in almost every other game that he's played, he's been worse than Ron Coates because he doesn't even get into the positions that Ron Coates gets into to not cross the ball. Like, he doesn't even get that far because he's not quite as good. So that kind of adds, yeah, it's a real problem for us. And Ron Coates has got a little bit better recently, but like, screw it. You know what? I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to start Ricky Griffiths. So on the bench, Gibberinich, Fleming, Miech, Campbell, Fjorta Flervik, Ron Coates, and Mamakon Oz. Watch Ricky Griffiths put in another one of those. I think he just does it for the cameras. Because you saw him score against Brentford. You've seen him score against Nottingham Forest on both occasions. Two in one and one in the other. I think you've seen four of his five goals this season. Forgot they have bloody Abubakar Kamara. It disappoints me that he's not AK-47 at Reading because for some reason Pushkas is number 47. See how this squeezy approach. Uh, we owe Reading. Yes, we must have lost to them at some point. <laughs> right, let's have this. I think if we come to Reading and win, that would be a massive statement because they are a very, very difficult side to beat. Birmingham are beating West Brom. Huge news for us. This could be massive for us. I mean, I'd settle for a draw at the Medeski if... Oh dear, that's poor. Pushkas is in behind again here. It's up for Vitamin P. He's got to try and make a stop. And... Well, to be fair, we can't really fault the goalkeeper on that one. Uh, that was just bad defending. Reading have started very strongly in the opening few minutes of this match. Um, Yeah, I mean, they've got him behind us today, which is poor. But then you have to expect that sometimes. But the fact is, Vitman still makes the stop. Oh, no, he doesn't. I mean, he nearly keeps out the second. That's just... Why is Abubakar... Oh, no, I thought he was white for a second. That was weird. We have not started strongly so far. We've given up way too many chances too quickly in this vein. But hey, oh, God, Kamara's got a bit of pace as well now. He's in. It's a bit too wide for him, surely. Good block. Are any of our players actually going to put tackles in at all? Oh, my goodness. Now, it might just be an early out-the-gates kind of thing. And Hughes! Wow, that is about as out of against the run of players things can possibly be. Reading one, Notts County one. Sam Hughes, by the way, scoring his ninth goal of the season. When a centre-back is potentially going into double figures, you know you're doing something right. Great ball from Regan Booty. 19th assist of the season for him, and we've got it. But that is against the run of play beyond. There is also the potential that Reading just shot out the traps and now all sort of pull themselves back a little bit. And Hughes has hit the crossbar. He, he's nearly scored again. And Griffiths. Can he find a pass? He actually has, and it's, it's Regan Booty, of all people, getting in behind. He's gone too deep. Ah, oh, and there's Louis Molden to make the save. We've actually very much improved as the game's worn on, oddly. Considering how bad we were to start, that's surely offside against Kamara. Great stop, again, from Vitamin P. Oh, that's a good ball for Dan Juma again. And um, Vitamin P's going to be called into action once more. And once again, he has come up trumps. Kamara again. Saved by Palauskas. I'm going to drop the line in the second half because they are actually exposing us. And we've not actually been exposed that much using this type of strategy so far. But they actually are. And since it's 1-1, one, one, I want to, yeah. Get in a half time, drop that line back, and try something a little different in the second half. Because Leeds are beating Brentford. No surprises there. And somehow, Truffles is in. Oh my giddy aunt. Count Truffles. What? 
The goalkeeper, Vitamin P, has made eight amazing stops and he's made an assist. Look at this. To be fair, Reading have their own selves to blame here. They let him bring this out of the air. There's four of them around him. How they don't block him here, I'll never know. But he's put it in the back of the net. Unbelievable. Right. Sit a little deeper and try to absorb some pressure. Now, the fact that we've actually got ourselves into the lead here is... I fully say against the run of play. Reading deserve to be in front right now. And the only reason they're not is because our goalkeeper is an absolute beast. And the fact that Truffles has put that one away is truly sensational. Fulham still at 0-0. West Brom losing to Birmingham City. This would be the perfect game for us right now. Good Lord. I mean, with things going the way they are in the other games, we could actually afford to just draw this. But if we came up with a win, that would be some, some statement. Griffiths. Ball across. Booty! Tipped over by Louis Mulder as Fulham take the lead against Huddersfield. Booty's ball. And, oh, and headed wide by Hughes. That was a chance. W Williams, somebody make the run for him. Oh, well played, Nico. Finds Tyrese Campbell's in behind. One touch. And it's now 3-1. We've turned the game around on Reading here. We don't deserve it. They've created better opportunities today than us. Um, I have to say, on the balance of things, 3-1 is incredibly harsh on Reading. Uh, look at this touch from Nico Williams here. Flips it inside. Pings one over the top for Tyrese Campbell, who's straight in there. Takes it just close enough to the goalkeeper and fires it home for his 11th of the year as well. It's Reading 1, Notts County 3. My God. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend this is some tactical masterclass from myself, uh, because that's just not who I am. But what I would point out is that Reading have not had a shot on target in the entire second half. Campbell's in again, and he's found Troffin! And he should have scored. A Huddersfield late equaliser would be just the icing on the cake right about now for us. Um, but West Brom have equalised against Birmingham City. But at the moment, they would still be dropping points over us. Danjuma. Uh-oh. Trough in. Kamara. What a save from Vitamin P. That is a beautiful stop. We are shook. Shooketh, I say. Booty's ball. Mijic. Campbell. He's still got the ball, actually. Uh-oh. Uh, now we're in trouble. Three on one. It's going to be the last kick of the game anyway, so go on, Vitamin P. He saved it again. You have a new hero, people. Pushkas. Around the side again. Danny Lodas through for Reading. And again, it's saved by Vitamin P. If he hasn't got at least an eight, I will be furious. Oh, come on. That's... F uh, that Why are we still playing as well? I guess it's because of the injury to uh, Nico Williams there. I'd have to... Ah, oh, he deserves better than to concede two goals, in honesty. Uh, he can't see through the crowd. He can't get there. That's a shame for him. Like, I realise he was injured a little bit, but surely he wasn't on the ground for that long. There we go. Reading two, Notts County three. He still gets an 8.3. I mean... He was our best player. That's really saying something. Charlie McCann's goal was a thunderbolt. What a performance. Um, very fortunate to get the win. Just has to be noted. We were very, very fortunate to win that. But I don't know what Reading did towards the end of that match where they suddenly just woke up. <laughs> really, really weird. So, nakedness is, is definitely a factor that we're having to deal with. Williams is just, there's no way he's playing. Not a chance. Regan Booty is absolutely destroyed as well. Like, maybe for the bench, but I think we might be better off starting uh, Guberinch in there. Continue because he now has adjusted to that role and he's done all right when he's played so far this season i've got to be honest he's, got, he's averaging a seven which ain't bad Nah, i think he's still good enough to start there uh because he actually put in a solid performance against reading curtis jones on the left because mcphee's injured truffles up top no doubt about that i don't really call this a free hit we're three points clear but it could be six six puts that pressure right on the others have a little run himself he's wow look at this he's just flying past people here whips it across trough and flicks it in wow okay well loses out but curtis jones is there loses out again dowel and Connolly's in it's time for vitman p to make himself big and he does. I would not trust playing like this if we had McGee in goal. No chance. Kane. Oh, over the top again. And again, say by Pilar. Why are they suddenly able to do this? This wasn't happening before. Curtis Jones delivers one. And it's, it's Ricky Griffiths. Notts County 1, QPR 0. And Ricky Griffiths has got his sixth goal. You guys have seen five of his six league goals this season in live comms. He just seems to turn up for the cameras. Great ball in. He gets on the end of it. Of all people, Ricky Griffiths scoring a header there. 1 0 to Notts County. Huge moment for us. But if QPR continue to put balls in behind, then we'll have to drop back again, just like we were before. Hmm. Yeah, they are definitely breaking the back line way more than they were before. And this time they've got their reward for it. Right. What has changed? I am interested in what has actually changed. Because this wasn't happening in the off-camera matches. I mean, maybe it's just because they're better opponents. I don't know, but Brentford didn't do this. It might be because there's a different lineup in there today. To be fair, he's not going to save everyone, and the angle has made it very difficult for him. It's one all here. Ugh. If we go back in front, I might drop the line back again like we did against Reading. Burton. And is that an own goal? It is. Nico Hamalainen has scored an own goal. I don't understand what's happened there. It just looked like there was a header. Let's have a look. Burton whips the ball across. And... Has he just headed that into his own net? It just genuinely looks like it. Well, Fortune's stroking our favour again there as Nico Hamalainen has put the ball in his own net. 
maybe we've just come up against two teams who actually play a slightly more direct style of play, and that's why we're more vulnerable to it. Curtis Jones dispossesses his man. We've got men flying up there now. Tons of options for him. Can he find the right one? Finds Gubarinic. He's in. He's going to find the shot. Oh my goodness. Alexander Gubarinic. Notts County 3, QPR 1. What I would say about this approach is there is way more goals in it from an attacking perspective. We look so much more dangerous. We also look like we've got a bit of out us on the counter-attack too. Curtis Jones, this is a really good ball actually. Just rolls it in there. Gubarinic driving forward. This is a brilliant little finish. Bam. Toe poke. 3-1 to Notts County. This is huge. The other thing I'm really liking is our front line actually look like they've got some dynamism to them now. They're finding goals. Oh, lovely ball inside for Ricky Griffiths. And it's just rolled wider than net. My God. See if he can do what he did against Reading. Get on the end of something. 3-1 up now. Really strong position. But again, it could all change. I mean, they're still getting in behind. Connolly! What a stop that is from Vitamin P. Out wide for Walker, of all people. Skips through a few tackles, and it's a good save by Ramsdale. Guys, sort yourselves out. Like, you're all over the shop here. Mia, huge tackle again. Jones. Clips it in behind for Gubarinic, who's made a run from midfield. He's in again here. And a good save by Ramsdale. Well, there we go. Notts County 3, QPR 1. We're going to have beaten them again. And again, I feel like they've had enough chances to maybe score more goals today. We've still been decent on the night, but my goodness. Goals for Ricky Griffiths, an own goal. And that wonderful strike from Alexander Gubarinic right when you needed it. And two assists from Curtis Jones, of all people. As very importantly, that leaves us six points clear into those promotion spots now with just four matches to go. Regan Booty needs one more assist as well. We're right in there. Uh, literally two more victories possibly seven i think if we can take seven points from our final four matches we'll be guaranteed well we literally will be guaranteed promotion so here's what i'm thinking triple live com for the final episode of the season uh with rotherham and charlton off camera come back and do the liverpool fa cup semi-final followed by west brom at home that could be the one where we go up and then middlesbrough away from home in the final game of the season there's a lot that could still go wrong for us but rotherham and charlton are two games that we want to be playing right about now Oh, this is going to be fun. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, I really hope you have. It's been a fun one for me, Christ. Uh, drop a like, that'll be tremendous. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys very, very soon. As always, hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.